Jordan Belford was born on July 9, 1962 in the Bronx, New York. He was raised in Bayside by his parents, Max and Leah Belford, in the Queens, New York. He started off at the age of 16 with his friends selling Italian ice cream out of a styrofoam cooler on Jones Beach, Long Island, New York, and made about $20,000 from that. His first real job was selling seafood and meat door to door and then became so good at it that he decided to start up his own company in the early to mid 1980s. He sold 5,000 pounds of seafood a week. Two years later, his company failed and he had to file for bankruptcy. So I think. What was the job that made you realize you were a real salesman? Like that you could the, sell whatever the fuck you had. The meat and seafood door to door was the first real big sales job where I would go knocking on doors, uh, cold calling home to home, business to business, and selling them you know boxes of frozen meat and fish. And I just broke the company record the first day by a country mile and never looked back. No, sh what was the company record? If you don't mind me, it was uh, they right? were average, so they were averaging like five boxes per day. My first day, they gave me 35 boxes of meat in the truck. I sold all 35 boxes. I almost sold one woman in the truck, all right. And, and, and that first week, I sold 240 boxes. I think the average production was like 30 for the I was blow, I blew away the company record. Blew How long away. did you sell meat for? So I worked for this guy for about four weeks, and then I started my own meat company because I bought myself for these moves for, right? I was like, you know, they half the time there was no. F food in the freezer so i started my because before that i sold ice's blanket the blanket on jones beach that's amazing i heard yeah, that but that wasn't a say that was just hard nice. fact. that was hard work later he got a job at lf rothschild as a trainee broker but was laid off due to the black monday crash in 1987. your job is connector which means that you will be dialing the phone over 500 times a day trying to connect me with wealthy business owners and until you pass your series seven that is all you're going to fucking be doing sit Sit. Right, just so you know, last year I made over three hundred thousand dollars. The other guy you'll be working for, he made over a million. A million dollars. I can only imagine what a douchebag that guy must be. He then created his own brokerage firm named Stratton Oakmont. He started his firm out of a garage with five brokers: Andrew Green, Stephen P. Sanders, Victor Wang, Scotty Gelt and Danny Porish. Jordan taught a technique to his brokers that he called the Kodiak pitch, and this technique they would call clients, pull them in with a blue chip stock, then offer them a penny stock with higher margins and say a well-known brokerage firm they would also recommend. What we're gonna do is this. First we pitch them Disney, AT&T, IBM, blue chip stocks exclusively. Companies these people know. Once we've suckered them in, we unload the dog shit, the pink sheets, the penny stocks, where we make the money. 50% commission, baby. Now, the key to making money in a situation like this is to position yourself now before the settlement. Because by the time you read about it in the Wall Street Journal, it's already too late. Over time, Stratton Oakmont grew. They hired more brokers and moved into larger buildings until they had more than a thousand brokers overseeing investments of over $1 billion. Near the end of Stratton Oakmont, Jordan offered Steve Madden, CEO of Steve Madden Shoes, a $500,000 early investment with the firm. Then Stratton organized an IPO that gave themselves 85% of the company, which is illegal as an underwriter. Ever since the start of Stratton Oakmont, they have been under security of the National Association of Securities Dealers, now known as the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. Finally, in December 1996, the NASD expelled Stratton Oakmont, shutting it down. Belford was then indicted for securities fraud and money laundering in 1999. He served 22 months out of a four-year sentence in the Taft Correctional Institution in Taft, California, in exchange for a plea deal with the Federal Bureau of Investigation for running pump-and-dump scams that led investors' losses of approximately $200 million. For restitution of his clients, he owed a total of $110 million between 1,513 clients. He agreed to pay 50% of his income up until 2009. His final agreement was a minimum of $10,000 a month for life until he pays it off. When he made it in the institution, he was bunkmates with the famous Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. 
He told a story about being a stockbroker to Chong. Then Tommy told him it was a wild story and he should write a book about it. While in the institution, he taught himself how to write. Then when he was released, he wrote a book, then published it afterwards with the name Wolf of Wall Street on September 25th, 2007 with Van Tam Books. I learned to write in jail. Then I ripped up the pages because I didn't think they were good enough. When I got out of jail, I was going to say, what should I build another business? And ah, let me try to write a few pages. So I started writing. I wrote like 10 pages. I casually knew a book agent. So I sent him, I said, hey, well, I wrote this stuff. And he goes, so I sent him the pages. He goes, uh, did you pay Tom Wolf? He thought Tom Wolf wrote them. Wow. That's how close they were. So wow. dead on the Tom Wolf's voice, right? So um, he goes, I goes, that's really weird. He's got an incredible voice. Write 10 more. So I wrote 10 more. It took me like about a week back in the day. I was a very mm -hmm. slow writer. Still am, right? And um, I sent him the pages. He goes, stop everything you're doing. He goes, you have no idea what's going to happen to your life. I was like, what? He goes, just trust me. You have no idea. This is going to be a movie. DiCaprio is going to play you. This is in 2006, he wow. said. Wow. Incredible. Wow. Later in 2013, a movie was made with the same name directed by Martin Scorsese and written by Terrence Winter, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jonah Hill and others. The movie made a total of $389 million in theater sales and $40 million in DVD and Blu-ray sales. Now Jordan Belfort works as a motivational speaker. He started talking about financial ethics and motivation. Then he moved on to sales skills and entrepreneurship later in his career. Here's the deal. And you're going to know this is true when you hear it because it's a basic truth of life. The reason that most people are not successful or not wealthy is not because they set their goals too high and miss them. It's because they set them too goal low and hit them. Get that? It's not because you set your goals too high and miss. You set your goals too low and you hit them. And you get caught up in the average daily struggle of averageism and mediocrity. That's what kills people. Everybody raise your hand for a second, please. Raise your hand. Now raise it as high as you can. I'm going to crouch so I can see, okay? Now just raise it a bit higher, everyone, higher. Why the hell did that happen? I say raise it as high as you can, and then, say, okay, then a little bit higher, okay, well, if you really mean it, right? You get it? It's that extra inch. That's where you want to set your goal. Not pie in the sky and out of control like it's never going to happen, because that's a load of crap, too. People that set those sort of goals, they abandon those goals, and I'll get to that later. But the idea here is you want to set the goals just above your comfort zone. We decided to choose Jordan Belford because his story represents so many different things, such as how you can use hard work and determination to become so successful in life, then end up losing everything you have, then eventually growing from that and becoming even more successful from there on. 